Hey guys, thanks for checking the video out. Now I find that when trimming a free flight model, one of the most important things to get correct is the thrust angle. So for this reason, I always make it adjustable. And this is the method that I use. So I start out by removing some material in the back of the nose block. I normally do this with a Dremel, and this allows the necessary movement for the shaft. Then I cap it off with a piece of ply, and I mark the piece of ply with some references so that you can always see the position of the shaft. We'll need a couple of other components too, so let's have a look at them. So I've bound the front of the tube that the shaft runs through with some thread and used some CA to harden that and stop it coming off. I roughened the surface before doing that too. Then I've made this little bracket using the top of a tin. Simple as that. Material that we've all got. It's a very basic assembly as you can see, but it works really nicely. Now this is the start of the assembly for the propeller. A bit of brass tubing and piano wire to make a little hinged bracket. I made some clearance in the prop, glued it in position, and then bound it up with some thread and CA'd that too. That fixes it nice and tight. Final assembly is done by inserting the prop shaft from behind and bending it at 90 degrees, cutting to length. It's a neat little assembly, and you'll see how it works in a moment. So this is the one-way clutch. You can see the movement of the clutch. And I'll turn the shaft here so that you can see that it grips in one direction and allows free movement in the opposite direction. Here's a different view of the same thing. It's critical that the hinge point moves nice and freely to provide no resistance, otherwise the prop won't freewheel nicely when the rubber motor stops driving. By loosening the back plate screw fractionally, there's still some pressure on the plate, so this means that I'm able to reposition the shaft nice and accurately, of course referring to the, the uh, marks that I've got on the back plate as a reference, and then of course re-secure it once I'm happy with the new position. Once the screw's tightened, the shaft sits nice and securely. You can see I've reproduced this similar method on smaller models as well. Hope this little tutorial helps you guys in the future. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.